The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh... <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. We get a lot of requests to repeat shows. From time to time, we try to comply. Tonight, at the request of the Boys Clubs of America, we are repeating one which seems to have found favor with many of our listeners. There is trouble afoot in Summerfield, potential trouble anyway. Two small boys are wandering down Lakeside Avenue with nothing to do. The one kicking the tin can is Gildersleeve's nephew, Leroy. The other is little Craig Buller. Hey, Leroy, wait up! It's been a restless afternoon. They've already been thrown out of the 5 and 10, where they were doing a little window shopping and testing, and Peavy's Pharmacy, where they rearranged the magazine rack. Now it looks as if they'd reached a dead end. But suddenly, Leroy's eye lights up. Hey, look, a new house! Yeah. The workmen are all gone. Yeah, they're all gone. Come on, Craigie. Last one up to rotten eggs. No fair, you got a head start. Well, okay, we don't have to race. Hey, a whole barrel of nails. Yeah, gee, a whole barrel. Uh, no use swiping them now. When do we come down? Here's the ladder. Gosh, it's springy. Don't step on my fingers. Well, don't stick too close behind me. I'm way back here. Hurry up. Hey, here's a piece of cable. Boy, cable's hard to get. Yeah, cable's scarce. What is it? <laughs> what is it? Boy, are you dumb. Look. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. Hey, there's a whole bundle of shingles. Yeah, we'll get some after. Hey, what do you know? Here's the bathroom. Yep. Gee, that tub is dirty. Maybe it's second hand. Come on, let's go up on the roof. Yeah, the roof. Can I go first? Nah, you better let me in case of... Well, I, I better go first. Okay. Boy, this will take us right to the ridge pole. Where's that? That's the top. That's as high as you can go. Gee. Hey, you can see the whole town from up here. Wait a minute, I want to see it. Well, come on. Yeah, you can. See the whole town. Yeah, there's school. And there's our house. There's our house. Yeah, right across the street from our house. Hey, look, a Selby's ice truck. Don't it look small? Yeah, like a toy truck. Hey, there goes your uncle. Where? They're walking along Lakeside. I can tell because he toes out. Hey, Mr. Gildersleeve. Shut up. We don't want him to see us. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. That's okay. He didn't hear you. I guess he's going home. <laughs> Whoever that is, Bertie, I'm not here. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. Uh, Mr. Gilsey's residence. I'm sorry, sir, he's not home. The police station? What? Oh, uh, hold on, I see. Mr. Gilsey, Leroy, and Craig Bullard are down at the police station. Man says they stole some lumber. What? You want to talk to the man? No, no, just tell him I'll be right down. <coughs> Arrested. Oh, <laughs> darn no, those kids. <laughs> Well, I hope you're properly ashamed of yourself, Leroy. And I'm sorry to see you mixed up in this, Craig. I didn't do anything. Leroy did it. You did, too. No, no. Let's have the facts. Are they going to put us in jail? Or... No, no. Nothing like that. I want to go home. We'll go home as soon as I talk to the... Uh, who was it that called me? That fellow behind the desk? Yeah. Well, I'll tackle him in a minute. But I have to know exactly what happened first. That means the truth, Leroy. <laughs> okay. We were just playing around the house. All we did was pick up a couple of old boards we thought nobody would want. You mean new boards? I want the truth, Leroy. This is it. 
We didn't think anybody would mind just a couple of boards, so we were taken them home, and a cop saw us and brought us here. I want to go home. Just a minute, Craig. Is, is that all? Absolutely all? Sure, that's all we took, wasn't it, Craig? I didn't take any. What about the nails? It, nails? Craig's got a whole pocket full of them. Well, walk easy so you won't jingle. <laughs> now, come with me, both of you. Uh, are you in charge here, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Are you this boy's guardian? Yes, the one that needs a haircut. Uh, it just so happens, Sergeant, that the chief of police is a close personal friend of mine, so if you don't mind, I'll just take this thing up with him. You mean you want to see the chief? I do. Now? That is correct. And if you're interested in keeping your job... I'm interested, and I'm not worried about it. The chief's out of town, drove over to Salinas this afternoon for a visit with his mother. Oh, he did. Every time there's anything popping in this town, the chief was someplace else. <laughs> well, now look here, Sergeant. Uh, have a cigar. I don't use tobacco, thanks. Oh, admirable, admirable, yes. <laughs> well, now tell me, Sergeant, just as man to man, don't you think it's ridiculous arresting these boys just for picking up a couple of sticks of wood? The report says they were walking off with three planks of number two Douglas fir. <laughs> What's the difference to a boy? They're just pieces of wood. That's all I thought they were. I'm just a couple of... I'm handling this, Leroy. You're in a very serious predicament. Let me do the talking. I suppose this is only petty larceny, isn't it, Sergeant? What do you mean, only petty larceny? In this state, you can get a year in jail for petty larceny. Oh, did he say jail? He's not talking about you, Leroy. I want to go home. Craig, for goodness sake. I told him not to take it. You be quiet or I'll tell him about the nails. <laughs> Uh, Sergeant, I'm sure the chief will straighten this out when he gets back. Well, that may be. All I know is these boys are booked. They'll have to appear in court on Monday morning. Oh, do we have to go to jail till Monday? No, no, I'm sure. Oh, no, oh, no. Quiet! Ah! I'll take you home in a minute. Shut up! This is the police station. Will you release these boys in my custody, Sergeant? I'll be glad to. Stop crying, Craig, or I'll leave you in jail. Phew. Now, come on. Now, as I say, Gilded, there's nothing I can do but let the law take its course. Huh. Call yourself a lawyer. I'm not only a lawyer, but a judge. My oath pledges me to uphold the law. Whereas you're trying to get me to circumvent it. Oh, you make me tired. Confound Leroy. I don't know what to do with him. Got half a mind to send him to military school. What the dickens for? Because he's getting out of hand. Because he won't pay any attention to anything I say. This is the way juvenile delinquency starts for us. Oh, nonsense. Sending him to military school would be simply crawling out of your own responsibilities. It would not. Military school would be the making of that boy. Teach him to sit up straight and toe the mark. Well, he's your nephew, but I'm against it. What would you do? Have you tried reason, Throckmorton? Reason with Leroy? Don't make me laugh. I mean adult reason. I've watched you try to reason with Leroy, and you treat him like a child. Leroy happens to be a child, Judge, and a pretty childish one at that. Makes no difference. Treat him as an adult, and he'll respond in an adult way. You really think so? Well, as a lawyer, you're a total loss. Why I should take your advice on child psychology, goodness only knows. Well, there's one thing about it, Gildy. It's free. I'll take it. <laughs> Leroy, sit down here a minute. What for? I want to talk to you. As man to man. Yeah? Sit down. Okay. Not way over there. Come closer. Closer? Yes, bring the chair over here. Okay. Now, as man to man, Leroy, you realize you've been a bad boy today. Yeah, I guess so. I want you to think about it a little. I want you to think about what kind of man you'll turn out to be. I want you to... Leroy, what are you counting, if I may ask? The squares in the carpet. Well, stop it. <laughs> stop looking at that carpet. Look me in the eye. Okay. <laughs> Leroy, I'm going to treat you like a grown-up. You've committed a serious offense. 
And I want to ask you a serious question. What? What do you think your punishment should be? Me? Yes, you. I'm putting the decision up to you. She. You've committed a crime, my boy. You've broken the state law. You've broken one of the Ten Commandments. Number eight, I believe. <laughs> what kind of punishment do you think would be fair and just? No dessert for a week? I give up. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you, young man. I'm going to send you to military school. Yes, sir, military school. You wear a uniform all day, and you keep it neat and clean, and you learn to salute and march and say, sir. Now, what do you think of that? I think I'll like it. Then you can't go. <laughs> now, you get upstairs and go to bed. No supper. Well, no dessert. By George, we're going to have some discipline around here. <laughs> Here's good news for you food shoppers who have had to take substitutes for your favorite brand of cheese. Kraft American is back. Mm, that is good news. Just the other day, my husband said he's been hankering for some real Kraft American. He likes its mellow cheddar flavor. Good news for me, too. I love to cook with cheese, but when I do, I want Kraft American. It always toasts and melts to perfection. Well, ladies, now you can get all the genuine Kraft American pasteurized processed cheese you want. My family is so fond of Kraft American. Say, do they have it in the two-pound loaf? They certainly do have the two-pound loaf. Now that enough cheddars have had the time to age properly, Kraft American is available in that size and the handy half-pound packages. Or, if you prefer, you can get cuts or slices from the big five-pound loaf. It's all the same high quality. Just be sure the label or wrapper is plainly marked Kraft American. <laughs> Now back to the great Gildersleeve, who was once again where he so often finds himself at his wit's end. Baffled and discouraged by the problem of how to bring up a young nephew, he has decided to shove it aside for the moment and seek diversion among his friends at the Jolly Boys Club. And so he sets out, a heavy-hearted Jolly Boy, glumly in search of an evening of fun. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Uh, greetings, Peavy. You going to the Jolly Boys? Well, yes, I thought I would for a little while. Well, I'll walk down with you. Oh, that's real nice of you. I'm glad to have your company. You don't mind if I close up shop here first. It won't take but a minute. Sit down. Yeah, all right. Go ahead. <laughs> Peavy, don't ever have any children. Uh, beg pardon? <laughs> I say, whatever you do, don't have any children. I wasn't thinking of having any. <laughs> well, don't. They'll drive you crazy. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. I say, they'll drive you crazy. That's all. Thirty-five, forty, forty-five. Peavy, I'm trying to talk to you about children. Uh, go ahead, I'm listening. 10, 20, 30, 40. No, you're not. You're counting. I I'm sorry. I'm just trying to close up here. 55, 60. That's a dollar 15. I never get rich that way. <laughs> now, what was it about children, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, let it go. You seem to be a little out of sorts this evening somehow. Well, who wouldn't be? Leroy's gone and got himself in jail. <coughs> Leroy? Well, not in jail, exactly. He got himself arrested. Leroy got... Well, not arrested, exactly. I had to go down to the police station and bail him out. You had to... Well, ba not bail him out. <laughs> they released him in my custody. You sure it was Leroy? What? Uh, only joking, Mr. <laughs> well, that's nothing to joke about. You don't know what worry is, Phoebe. You've never had any children. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I, I mean, I... I wouldn't say I never worry. After all, I'm a married man. Wife's a blessing, of course, in many ways, but she's also a responsibility. Yeah, but you don't have to worry about your wife going out and swiping lumber. That's what Leroy's been up to? I'm afraid so. Well, I always say boys will be boys. I know you do, and I wish you'd think up something different to say. 
Oh, come on, PV, let's get out of here. Let's hear that fruity baritone of yours. Yeah, come on, Gildy. Some other time, fellas. I'm not in the mood right now. What's the matter, Commish? You don't seem like your old foolish self tonight. Is the chief of police going to be here, Floyd? I've been trying to get a hold of him all day. Chief's out of town visiting his mother. At least that's his story. Why? Nothing. <laughs> Gildersleeve's nephew has had a little run-in with the police. Leroy? Well, he's been helping himself to wood from a new house, if you must know. Baloney, a couple of little boards... Who hasn't swiped a couple of little boards when he was a kid? Well, I'll bet every one of us sitting here in this room has lugged off more lumber than Leroy ever saw, including Peavy. Well, now, I was... Well, I... <laughs> Come to think of it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why, sure. A new house goes up, kids just naturally got to play on it. You know that yourself, Commissioner. Well, I guess it is pretty tempting. Sure. But playing is one thing, Floyd. Stealing is something else. Stealing? Well, who's stealing? So a couple of boards are laying around. The kid sees other people building things, and he wants to build something. Monkey see, monkey do, that's all. Floyd is right. It's just as he says. The creative, impulsing youth needs an outlet. That's all. Did I say that? <laughs> if the community provided proper facilities for play, these little peccadillos wouldn't occur. That's right. I'm for kids. You know, Horace... You've got me thinking maybe I was wrong for once. That, I would say, is a major achievement. After all, Leroy only wanted the board so he could build himself a clubhouse. <laughs> Leroy is a good kid. I'm for Leroy. After all, a clubhouse. Has there ever been a kid who didn't want a clubhouse? <laughs> That's right. Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, Penrod, all of them. The first thing they want is a clubhouse. A place they can call their own. I'm for kids. Kids are better than people. Yeah, well... They are only real friends, kids are. You know, that kid will never knife you in the back, which I wish I could say of some other people, mentioning no names. That's true, Floyd, but why... I ought to know. I cut their hair every day. I see all kinds. The only thing I got against kids, they won't sit still. But at least they ain't crabs and sourpusses. I hate a sourpuss. It's like I told my wife. When I come home nights after a hard day's work, I like a little cheery atmosphere around the place. Not this night, but I'm for kids. I think that we can safely say that we're all in favor of children, Floyd. Well, count me in. What we're discussing at the moment is Leroy. Leroy's okay. He's a good kid. Granted. I was a kid once myself. You were not alone in that either. Ahoy up there. Uh, fellas, it's the chief. He's back. Ahoy yourself. Come on up. Now, stick with me, fellas. We've got to make him see this thing my way. He'll see it your way. The chief's a good kid. I'm for kid. Hiya, Chief. Well, well, here's a pretty sight. If I didn't know you all, I'd swear it was the Dillinger gang. <laughs> Evening, Chief. How did you find your mother? Oh, she's swell, Judge, just swell. She's getting on now, but I kid her along. I tell her she doesn't look a day over 60. <laughs> well, Peavy, how's drugs and sundries? Oh, I can't complain. I don't know why I say that. Business is terrible. Well, keep plugging. Uh, Chief. Commissioner, I didn't see you standing there under the moose. Uh, oh. I wonder if I could have a word with you, Chief. You bet. And what's this I hear from my desk sergeant about your nephew being picked uh, up for... That's what I want to talk to you about. No use you two getting so confidential over there. We know all about it. Now, look, Chief, Leroy's a good kid. Why don't you just forget the whole business? Well, it's not so easy. What's so hard about it? Well, the fellow that's building the house is Honrath. Honrath? He's a louse. Well, sure, he's kind of a louse, but he's got influence, and he claims the kids are swiping his lumber so fast he can't get his house built. But, Chief, a few crummy little boards. I know. It's a petty crime if there ever was one. But, unfortunately, it's on the blotter now. If it hadn't got on the blotter... Well, if you'd been on the job, it wouldn't have got on the blotter. Why weren't you out catching crooks instead of gallivanting around the country? My sergeant takes care of that, and it seems he caught a couple. Oh! Uh, gentlemen, really, is, is this necessary? Yes, it is. Well, if it's necessary... Yep. Hey, Chief, let me ask you a simple question. And you can answer it or not as you see fit. But you're a bum if you don't. <clears throat> What's the question, Floyd? Were you ever a kid, Chief, or were you born a cop? Of course I was a kid. I've got pictures of when I was a kid. 
Or my mom has. I was going through the album with her only yesterday. And don't you remember what it was like to be a kid, Chief? Didn't you ever play hooky from school? Why, guess so. Didn't you ever roast Mickey's in a fire? Oh, sure. Didn't you ever go swimming in the old swimming hole? You too, Judge? Think of it, Chief. Your childhood. Blessings on thee, little man. Barefoot boy with cheeks of tan. They were the happiest days of your life, weren't they? The golden days of childhood. Fellas, I didn't want to do this. I was out of town at the time. But don't you see, there it is on the books. Fellas, don't look at me like that. Well, I guess the chief just hates kids, that's all. That's a hard thing to say of any man, Floyd. But I'm afraid you're right. Fellas. The quality of mercy is not strained. It falleth as the gentle rain from heaven. You said it, Judge. What's the use of being good to your mother if you hate kids? I don't hate kids. Well, I just bought two dollars worth of Easter seals to help the crippled kids. I'm as fond of kids as anybody. Even Leroy. Well, here's your chance to prove it. But my duty, I took a oath. The boy was formally booked. It's there on the blotter in black and white. Caught stealing lumber. It's up to the owner now. If he wants to prefer charges, my hands are tied. Well, let it go. Yeah, Floyd. If he can't, he can't, that's all. Thanks, Floyd. I'm glad somebody understands. Chief, do you know what day this is? What day? Yeah, it's ten minutes to midnight. Ten minutes to St. Patrick's Day. I don't know if that means anything to you, but I happen to have a bit of Irish in me, myself. Irish, is it? Uh-huh. If there's Irish in a Munson, sure, there's twice as much in a Gates. I'll be that as it may, and let's not be breaking any heads over the matter. I'd hate to have the good Saints Day come in without a song to greet it. Shake hands with your Uncle Mike, me boy. Shake hands with your sister, Kate. Sh- well, come on. If you're going to sing an Irish song, Floyd, give us one with a little heart in it. Commissioner, I thought you were a Dutchman. Huh? <laughs> How about you, Judge? There's a bit of Irish terrier in him, too, Floyd. The rest is goat. <laughs> <laughs> Come over here, Horace. You can sing if you'll sing softly. I sing loud or not at all. <laughs> well, that leaves only the peeve. I guess Peavy's the only one who hasn't got any Irish in him. Well, no, I wouldn't be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> him, too. What a pack of liars. Come on, Peavy. Uh, Peavy only sings one note, but it's a pip. Peavy <laughs> sings a note that can be heard only by dogs. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on, fellas. A little bit of, you know. Should a little bit of hell from out the sky one day Sure, it looks so sweet and fair. They say to those we leave it, for it looks so peaceful there. So they sprinkled it with stardust just to make the sheriff grow. It is the only place you'll find them, no matter where you go. Then they dotted it with silver Just to make its lake so grand And when they had it finished Sure, they called it Ireland Oh, that's, that's, that's beautiful Beautiful. Huh. Why? Why, Chief? I know, I know. It always takes me this way. Reminds me of my mother and me, a little one on her knee. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. Honest sentiment is nothing to be ashamed of. You're right, Chief. I'll tell you something else. St. Patrick's Day is hardly the time for a jolly boy to be jailing the nephew of a fellow member. Lord's got something there, Chief. How about it? My Seamus, he's right. Oh, now, wait a minute, fellas. I wouldn't want to interfere in any way with the chief's conception of his duty. Uh, <clears throat> duty comes first. No, Commissioner, my duty's clear to me now. 
I'll have a talk with Honrath and see if I can't get him to withdraw the charge. You think he might? He'll either withdraw it or I'll have the building inspector hang a complaint on him. <laughs> Picking on kids like that. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. <laughs> Folks, have you had a hankering for some of that good, medium, mellow cheese like we had before the war? Well, hanker no more. Kraft American is back. Kraft American for golden toasted cheese sandwiches. Kraft American for satin smooth cheese sauce. Kraft American for all kinds of wonderful cooked dishes. No longer do you have to be satisfied with a substitute. Insist on the genuine Kraft American. Whether you buy the half-pound package, the two-pound loaf, or slices or cuts from the big five-pound loaf, make sure it's plainly marked Kraft American. And here's more good news for you mothers. Velveeta is plentiful again. That delicious cheese food with the rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor that children like so well. Smooth, melting Velveeta that makes such a grand cheese sauce. So when you buy Kraft American, get a package of Velveeta, too. <laughs> Leroy, what are you doing awake at this hour? It's after one o'clock. I couldn't sleep. Don't be mad at me, Uncle, please. I'm not mad at you, my boy. But what's wrong? I wanted to tell you, I'm sorry if I was bad today. I didn't mean to be, but I'm sorry if I was. And I thought of a punishment like you said. Uh, forget it, my boy. I know you didn't mean any harm. Then what was all the fireworks about? <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, Leroy. It may be difficult to understand... But it's a fact. Grown-ups can sometimes make mistakes. Yes, even your own uncle. It's very confusing being a grown-up. Very confusing. I often wish I were a boy again like you. To make the most of the time when you're young, my boy, I want you to do nothing but have fun and have a good time. Do you remember that? Yeah, but will you? <laughs> well, I'll try. I'll go to sleep. Uh... I haven't done this in a long time, Leroy. But do you mind if I kiss you goodnight? No, go ahead. Good night, my boy. God bless you. Good night, Unc. Oh, and, uh, Leroy. Yes? Don't forget to take the ashes out in the morning. <laughs> He's okay. Boy, I was worried about him there for a minute. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Stay tuned in now for Duffy's Tavern, which follows over most of these stations. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night, John. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Here's happy news for homemakers. Now you can make real, rich, velvety smooth ice cream in your refrigerator. Just get the new craft product called Frizz, F-R-I-Z-Z. -Z. One package makes six generous servings of ice cream, and very economically. You simply add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to directions on the package. Add fruit juices or flavoring for variety. Frizz contains plenty of fine cream and milk. Made by a process that retains marvelous freshness of flavor. Get Frizz from your food dealer tomorrow. Surprise the family with homemade ice cream tomorrow night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.